Hello ladies and gentlemen, Killshaw here, and today we'll be doing an accuracy comparison featuring the Savage Axis in 308. Now I have two rifles here on the table, the first one is in 6.5 Creedmoor, and the second one is a Savage Axis in 308. I bought both of these rifles used, and after testing the 308 in its factory configuration, I then moved it into the Oryx chassis and cut a few coals off of this trigger spring to see how exactly the accuracy would be affected and how big of a difference it would make. Now we'll be starting off the first part of the video, accuracy testing the Savage Axis inside of the polymer stock and without adjusting the trigger spring whatsoever. For this part of the video, I'll be using three different types of ammunition, the first being Nosler, the second being Federal Gold Metal Match, and the third being my reloads using spare gold target bullets. Those are these bullets right here, and we'll be seeing how those ones performed. Now I did not do any load development for this rifle yet, I just chose a random powder charge B40 grains of IMR3031 to get a targeted velocity and seeing how the bullets perform on this rifle in general. While watching these grooves, pay attention to the first three shots as this is a pencil barrel so it is known to heat up and shooting fast shot groups can cause a bit of disparity and the spread of the groups itself. So without further ado, we'll start off with those groups and then we'll come back here. And we're back. Now for a factory rifle at this price point, those groups are not too bad, but there is a little bit of room for improvement. It is important to remember that this is a hunting rifle, so it does come with a thin pencil barrel, so when doing fast shot groups, it is expected for there to be a bit of deviation within the group spread. Now me personally, I like doing fast shot groups instead of three shot groups, because I find when you do three shot groups, it's easier to get lucky. And when you do fast shot groups, you learn a bit more about your rifle, especially the barrel, and how it performs with heat. So now moving forward, we'll do the exact same test, except we'll put the rifle inside the Oryx chassis and cut a few coals from the trigger spring and lighten the trigger pull a little bit. While watching this next few groups, I ran out of nozzle ammunition, so I'll only be doing a comparison using my reloads once again and using Federal Gold Metal Match. And so now we'll cut on over to that.
and we're back. So once again, the first three shots of both those groups were very good. And you can see putting in a chassis and lighting the trigger spring did help quite a bit when it comes to the first three shots and the groups were tighter in general. Now I did some other filming shooting more groups and the consensus was that in general the groups did get tighter and were more consistent all in all. Now the first factor in getting those better groups is most definitely the trigger. The Savage Axis in the non accurate trigger model is known to have a very heavy trigger pull which is about 6 pounds from other videos I've watched. Cutting off this trigger spring here, I cut it to match the performance of my main target rifle which is a Brigara BMP and now I can say the trigger pull is probably about 3 to maximum 4 pounds of pull weight. With a heavy trigger such as this one from Factory, it does definitely affect your accuracy because you're focusing more on pulling the trigger than your other fundamentals such as breathing, your point of aim, and keeping the rifle steady in general while not jerking the trigger after engaging it. The trigger here works very well but there is one thing to note when you cut the coils it does induce a bit of play after the trigger is fired which I'll demonstrate right now. So after cocking the rifle there is no play with the trigger group as you can see right here there's no play with the trigger but after firing the rifle a little bit of play does occur as you can see right here. Now this is not the biggest deal as the play occurs after the rifle is fired and the bullet has exited the barrel so it does not make that big of a difference. But ideally the solution to a better trigger in this rifle will be to use an M Carbo trigger spring kit and that is what I intend to do in the future. But as a quick fix, cutting off the coils on the trigger spring does indeed help and will give you better results right away. The second part affecting the accuracy is most definitely putting the rifle in a chassis. Now the Savage Axis in the polymer stock is free floating but it is known to be rubbing against the side of the stock when it comes to the barrel. So what a lot of people do is they take the rifle out of the, out of the polymer stock and they sand down that part of the polymer stock that rubs onto the barrel. This probably will increase your accuracy a little bit but will not give you the best results and consistent results such as putting a rifle in a good steady platform such as a chassis or perhaps even a Boyd stock. The chassis is the best option because it is truly free floating and there's no need for bedding which still might be necessary when putting a rifle in a Boyd stock. As far as the scope goes, it's nothing special. It's the regular scope that comes from factory. Now the Savage Axis comes with either a Bushnell 3x9 scope or a Weaver 3x9 scope. The scope is not too bad, but there is a bit of blurriness that occurs at maximum magnification. The parallax is not too bad, but once in a while I think I do see a bit of shift. And on top here we do have the turrets, which you can adjust with your thumbs, but there's not too much surface area to work with here. So it is a bit cumbersome, but it still works very fine. I've had no issues losing zero or any problem with the internals which has been known to happen with some of the Weaver alternatives for the scope from factory. Otherwise that pretty much wraps up everything here. The Savage Axis is a very good rifle and when you pair it in an Oryx chassis it is a very good basic shooter. It's by no means a precision shooter but the good thing about the Savage Axis it's a very modifiable platform. So they all come in a barrel nut as you can see here. So after what you can do is replace the barrel and all you would need to do is just have a wrench and a gauge and no go gauge and you can replace the barrel very easily. The good thing about the Savage Axis is they all come in long actions so you can chamber it in any long or short action car cartridge that you prefer. Now that basically is the gist of the rifle and that concludes the video. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Happy shooting. Adios.